Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sahar from Dentabest, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD, ADAT and AFK exam. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss the basic differences between the amalgam and the composite. Let us see what are the important concepts involved here. First of all, when we see the features between the amalgam and the composite, we know that the amalgam restorations, we are having the convergence occlusally that is providing the primary retention form. But in case of composite, the primary retention or resistance form is mainly provided by micromechanical bonding that you have. The secondary retention form features which could be required in amalgam, the reason is complex restorations, MODs, more than two surfaces involved, you give grooves, slots, locks or pins, but in composites, again the bonding. When we talk about the resistance form, having flat floors provide the resistance form line angles point angles which are internally rounded it avoid the stress concentration that also give the resistance form so having a flat floor make it sure that the forces they are falling perpendicular to the occlusal table so that they are best tolerated again for composite it is not required here because everything is mechanically bonded now when we talk about the technique sensitivity of course for amalgam too, we have to properly isolate the teeth because if there is no proper isolation, we know there is something called as delayed amalgam expansion that can happen because of the presence of zinc which interacts with the water and the moisture to make zinc oxide and hydrogen gas that can lead to delayed amalgam expansion. However, as compared to other restoration, amalgam still tolerate moisture better. But in case of composite, it is very, very technique sensitive. So if there is any moisture contamination, the first step of etching is going to fail with the composite. The walls of the preparation are smooth with amalgam. For composite, they can be rough because rougher surface will increase the surface area for the etching and the better bonding. Amalgam having good compressor strength, we use it for posteriors all the time, but mainly the interior teeth for the composite because of better aesthetic as well as prominent posterior areas it can be used for the newer composite formulations that we have. Now, when we talk about the base, base is definitely required for metallic restorations like amalgam and gold because base is going to provide the thermal and mechanical insulation as well but for composite it is not required. Now when we talk about the mechanical properties of course it has good mechanical properties but composite we know it can easily wear down. Aesthetics amalgam is a metallic restoration poor aesthetic but composite is all tooth colored. When we talk about the pulpal depth for amalgam we have to follow some numbers like we have 1.5 millimeter from the central groove to the depth of the preparation or 0.5 mm into dentine, box shape cavity, flat floors. But in case of composite, we can do a very conservative preparation. You can just remove the caries. You don't have to make a uniform preparation. For amalgam, we do what is called as extension for prevention. Now, when we talk about so when we talk about the A changes, we will see that we have more setting expansion in the amalgam with aging and with contraction that is setting contraction of polymerization shrinkage that we see with composite. Lifespan, amalgam restoration are definitely longer lasting as compared to conservative, as compared to composite and you have non-conservative to preparation amalgam while the preparation in the composite is very conservative. We have more hazards especially for the operator when it comes to inhalation of mercury vapors with the amalgam while composite is definitely hazard free. Polishing time with amalgam, you take one full day, 24 hours, ask the patient to come back for the polishing, for the final uh, amalgamation reaction to happen. While in case of composite, you can polish it immediately. Now, when we talk about the cavo surface margin, as we know for amalgam, we give what is called as a butt fit joint or 90 degree. And for composite, we are giving beveled margin because beveling is going to expose more enamel rod and increase the surface area for better etching and better bonding. Self sealing property is absent in composite but with amalgam we know with time in 4 to 6 months of time you will have corrosion products which are formed made up of tin sulphide and these corrosion products are going to make amalgam a self sealing restoration. Actually the leakage if it happens with amalgam it happens more in the initial phase but over a period of time the leakage will decrease because of formation of corrosion products. Physical properties, of course, it has excellent compressive strength and very good wear resistance. As compared to amalgam, composite has weaker mechanical or physical properties. For amalgam, we use mainly in the posteriors because it is unesthetic, class 2 and class 1. But composite, 
of course uh, the newer formulations of composite we have we can use it for class 1 2 3 but more for conservative preparations on class 1 class 2 then class 3 class 4 which are aesthetic areas composite is very much preferred cavity size extensive but for composite as we know cavity size can be small toxicity with amalgam is higher due to presence of mercury vapors and also the staining potential of amalgam by like causing amalgam tattoo or amalgam blue blue is turning the tooth blue itself because of leaching of corrosion product the same thing can form on tissues in the form of amalgam tattoo but with composite the toxicity or staining potential is absent that is one of the advantage we have now when we talk about the cost of course uh, amalgam is much cheaper as compared to composite let us talk about the class one preparation is different in amalgam versus composite first of all we should try to see what are the similarities enamel must be supported with dentine to overcome the fracture of course it has to be there and all angles must be rounded whether it is for amalgam or composite we do rounding of internal line angle and point angle to prevent any stress concentration then the walls must be entirely so if you look at the walls uh, the walls must be either parallel or it should be perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth to decrease the stress concentration all the forces should fall perpendicular to the pulp of floor or they should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth that is what is most important here then if we see the outline form for amalgam we have to include all the pits and fissure and other areas which are suspicious or prone to queries but in composite the cavity is limited to the defected areas and does not have to extend the suspicious area or extend to all pits and fissure we can see in composite the preparation is more conservative as compared to an amalgam where you have to make a proper form of the preparation width of the cavity in amalgam should be within one four to one third of the intercuspal distance if your cavity is wider than this you may have to consider doing the cusp capping when we talk about the retention you can see between amalgam and composites amalgam has a macro mechanical retention amalgam is mechanically bonding to the tooth structure and that's the reason you have to have a very proper form of preparation for amalgam but for composite we know everything is micro mechanical bonding that you have it happens at the molecular level so you have rough surface of the prepared walls and this roughness helps in better etching and better bonding we have diverging mesial and distal walls because diverging walls mesially and distally will help in preventing the undermining of the marginal ridges which are strong part of the tooth structure we have smoother prepared walls in amalgam now retention is dependent upon the design of cavity of course for amalgam so we give the retention forms there a dentinal retention groove or enamel bevel might be required in case of composite to enhance the retention form now when we talk about the next one here in the resistance form again for amalgam you have to have minimum 1.5 mm of pulpal depth and floor must consist of dentine your cavity should have a floor of dentine which is hard which can be not flaked away it should be free of any soft discolored dentine and the axial wall the vertical axial wall like you have in class 2 or class 5 it is 0.2 to 0.5 inside the dj this is the depth of the axial wall now if the caries extend deeper than the depth of 1.5 mm which is a standard only the caries area is excavated and a flat seat is established around to not affect the retention form if your caries are deeper than this depth you don't remove them in the initial phase of your tooth preparation you come back to it later to remove any deeper caries in the final tooth preparation stage the composite we know we don't have to have a uniform pulpal depth but usually it is between 1 to 2 mm axial wall also you don't need to have any uniform depth there it depends upon the extent of defect and you can stop short of the dentino enamel junction if the case process also stops before the dentin is reached now when we talk about the resistance form amalgam as we are talking about cavo surface angle is 90 degree right because amalgam is brittle if you give less than 90 degree margins it is going to break 90 degree angle helps in giving the full support to the unsupported enamel rods so that all the enamel rods have a support of denti occlusal cavo surface bevel is contraindicated in case of amalgam yes but you can giving bevel at the gingival seat you are giving bevel at the exopalpal line angle but when we talk about composite the cavo surface angle is obtuse greater than equal to 90 degree or 
it is also called as well rounded that is the bevel when you give the bevel as i told you it will expose more enamel rod and it will increase the surface area of the enamel to be etched to strengthen the micromechanical bond acidic blending of composite with the two structure is also helpful by creating the bevel and so enamel rod with the bevel which is a obtuse angle or a well rounded angle at cavo surface margin will help in ending of enamel rod more effectively etched producing deeper micro round undercuts than when only the sides of the rods are etched you can see the picture and this will give you the advantage of having a bevel this is a bevel here an oblique angle that you can see or a well rounded cavo surface margins for the composite are beveled that is the reason now when we talk about the next one here in the composite we can see what's the main advantage of beveling it increases the surface area increase the acidic better bonding less micro leakage and also better blending of the composite with the two structure now let us see how they differ in the class 2 cavity preparation the amalgam versus composite then we have if you look at the outline form the occlusal outline same principle in class 1 ca cavity preparation both in amalgam and composite except that the external outline is extended proximally towards the defective proximal surface for a class 2 in amalgam the occlusal outline form of proximal box is mainly determined by buccolingual position of the contact and extent of the carious lesion moderate to very large class 2 composite restorations now when we talk about the outline form further we can see in the amalgam the proximal box the bucco proximal margin and lingo proximal margin and the gingiva floor all should extend to include the caries and break the contact with the adjacent tooth while in case of conventional composite what dictates the facial lingual and gingival extension of the proximal box is the extent of the carious lesion and the amount of the restorative material not required to extend the proximal box beyond the contact with the adjacent tooth in case of composite now for amalgam presence of infected carious dentine on portion of either purple floor or axial does not indicate deepening the entire wall so you can just remove the excess decay you don't have to deepen the entire wall slot preparation is also called as modified class 2 cavity preparation that can be used for placement of rmgis that are resin modified glass enamels now when we talk about the retention here you can see in the amalgam of course you have a occlusal dovetail right so if you look at the picture here so this is like a dovetail so it's called as occlusal dovetail by amalgam there is no bevel no cavo surface bevel for amalgam right no gingival bevel a rounded grooves within dentine at bucco and lingo proximal walls and the gingival floor divergence facial lingual width at gingiva greater than the occlusion now cavo surface bevel of course for composites there is no dovetail here and we of course we are giving the bevel at the gingival seat in amalgam the buccal and lingual walls are converging and mesial and distal walls as we know they are diverging for class 2 both the buccal lingual walls should converge to give the retention form for composite buccal lingual walls are not necessarily converging because it's all about micromechanical retention here for gold the buccal and lingual walls are straight and they are not converging now if we see more points of comparison between amalgam and composite we know amalgam has a good compressive strength it is strong durable and stands up to the biting force and uh, it can be placed in one visit for sure least expensive it has minimal to no shrinkage it resists the leakage better become, become a self sealing restoration with time and resistance to further decay is high frequency of repair and replacement in amalgam is usually lower and amalgam as well as resistant to moisture it can be the only material that can be used in wet environment especially important when treating small children where moisture control is difficult or special need patients with composite the advantages is definitely it is tooth colored color and shading are matching to the existing tooth composite is relatively strong providing good durability in small to mid size restorations it can withstand moderate chewing pressure fillings are usually completed in a single visit moderate resistance to breakage of course and very important advantage of composite you have good conservation of the two structure here you make the cavity 
as conservative as possible does not corrode of course that's one thing generally holds well to the biting forces moderately resistant to further decay but new decay can always start and frequency of replacement or repair is bit higher as compared to amalgam now when we talk about disadvantage of amalgam of course agencies like fda cdc who they have not found any significant harm with the amalgam but some groups some individuals some clinics they have made their offices mercury free because of their concern with the inhalation of mercury vapors uh, of, uh, but with the patients the chances of mercury allergy are very very low only 1 in 100 million patients to have uh, mercury allergy that's pretty low amalgam scrapes yes but you have to still teach your patients if you are using mercury in your dental office amalgam it is about the mercury hygiene mercury proper disposal and handling of the mercury chances of tarnish and corrosion are always there with the amalgam and when you put the amalgam of course the preparation is not as conservative you still have to remove some of the healthy tooth structure as well for composite the disadvantages come with composite being breaking wearing out easily as compared to the metallic restorations we have especially in area of heavy biting forces therefore composite filling may require replacement more often more difficult and time consuming to place than other fillings and more expensive than amalgam it may require more than one visit especially if you are giving indirect composite like inlays onlays may wear faster than enamel and yes you have polymerization shrinkage that is one problem always with composite